Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video we're going to work through some problems involving the Pythagorean theorem, which relates the two sides or the two legs of a right triangle to its hypotenuse. So if we draw a right triangle right, that has a 90 degree angle in it, the two legs are typically labeled A and B. The hypotenuse, the longer side, opposite that 90 degree angle is labeled C. And the Pythagorean theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The first one's a straight application of this. It says a right triangle has legs of 8 inches and 15 inches. Find the length of its hypotenuse. So I'm going to start by drawing a triangle, maybe not to scale, but we're told its two legs are 8 and 15 inches. What we don't know is the hypotenuse. And so using the Pythagorean theorem up above here, I have 8 squared plus 15 squared equals C squared. I'm going to square each of those numbers first. 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. That equals C squared. Add those two numbers together, we get 289 equals C squared. And now I can find out what C is by taking the square root of both sides. Again, in a geometry problem, I don't have to worry about the negative square root because the length of a side has to be positive. It can't be negative. So square root on both sides and the square root of 289 is 17. So the hypotenuse is 17 inches long. By the way, when um, the Pythagorean theorem, when you have three sides of a right triangle that are all integers, we call that a Pythagorean triple. 8, 15, 17 forms a Pythagorean triple. The next problem, one leg of a right triangle is 9 inches and the hypotenuse is 16 inches. Find the length of the other leg, round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So round to the nearest tenth of an inch makes me think that this square root won't work out so well. Let's see. Start by drawing a triangle. I know one leg is 9. I know the hypotenuse is 16 and I'm missing one of the sides. You can label that as A, B, X, whatever you want to use there. But by the Pythagorean theorem, 9 squared plus B squared equals 16 squared. 9 squared is 81 plus B squared equals 16 squared is 256. Now we'll subtract 81 from both sides to isolate the square. B equals 175. I'm sorry, B squared equals 175. Now we can take the square root of both sides. And again, in this geometry problem, I only need to worry about the positive square root. And the exact answer is the square root of 175, which we might be able to simplify. Um, if you wanted to factor it, it actually ends up being 5 square root of 7. However, all I need here is the approximate answer rounded to the nearest tenth of an inch. So I'm going to do that in the graphing calculator. I just need the square root of 175. I push the square root button, 175, oops, 75 equals, and I've got 13.2287. So to the nearest tenth of an inch, 13.22 rounds to be 13.2 inches. This next problem has a little bit more to it um, because we're going to have a couple of variables floating around or in a couple of different terms. The length of a rectangle is 4 inches more than its width. If the diagonal of the rectangle is 20 inches, find the length and width of the rectangle round to the nearest hundredth of an inch. So this problem involves rectangles and you might be thinking, um, I thought we were talking about the Pythagorean theorem here. And we are. The diagonal of a rectangle, let me draw the rectangle first, goes from corner to corner. And if we ignore the top and right side, we can see that forms a right triangle. We're told the length is 4 inches more than the width. So if we let the width be x, the length is 4 more than that. That's x plus 4. And we're told that the diagonal is 20 inches. So I've got three sides of a right triangle labeled. I can go to the Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem. 
x squared plus the other leg x plus 4 squared equals 20 squared. x plus 4 squared, I want to rewrite that as x plus 4 times itself. On the right hand side, 20 squared is 400. Now I'm going to multiply out that uh, second term on the right hand side using a style of multiplication like FOIL. Distribute the x. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Now distribute the 4. 4 times x is also 4x. 4 times 4 is 16. And that equals 400. Some like terms to combine on the left hand side. I've got 2x squared. 4x and 4x that adds to be 8x plus 16 equals 400. To get it into standard form, I'm going to subtract 400 from both sides. And now I've got 2x squared plus 8x minus 384 equals 0. Now, I don't want to factor this when the leading coefficient is not a 1. I think it's faster and more efficient to use quadratic formula than it would be to try to factor here. Also, in the directions it said round to the nearest ten hundredth of an inch and so that suggests that I'm going to need the quadratic formula as well however I do want to play it safe here these numbers I can factor out a common two from all the coefficients and that's going to make my work in the quadratic formula a little easier x two times the quantity x squared plus 4x minus 192 equals zero so if I could figure out how to factor this, um, and actually now it dawns on me, this will factor. If I could figure out how to factor this, I'd be done a lot quicker, but I'm gonna go through the motions with the quadratic formula first, then I'll show you the factored form and how much easier it would have been that the directions to round to a certain place are actually a little misleading here because we're not going to have to round at all. I think, we'll, we'll see. Um, first for the quadratic formula, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x equals the opposite of b, that's going to be the opposite of 4 or negative 4, plus or minus square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 for a times negative 192 for c all over 2 times a or 2 times 1. Continuing on, x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 1 times negative 192. That is 768 and that's going to be positive all over 2. x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 784 over 2. Do you have your uh, squares me memorized? What's the square root of 784? I'm not sure. Let's go to the calculator. Because we would need to be, we would need to use the calculator to approximate this if the square root didn't work out, but we should always check to see if the square root works first. I'm going to push the square root button, 784, and I get 28. So I can come back and replace that square root by 28. x equals negative 4 plus or minus 28 over 2. By the way, x here was the width of the rectangle. It's got to be positive. So the negative 4 minus 28 won't work negative 4 plus 28 over 2 equals 24 over 2 or 12. So our solution here is x equals 12. If I bring that all the way back up to my diagram, the width is 12 inches and the length is 12 plus 4 or 16 inches. We could check the the Pythagorean theorem 12 squared plus 16 squared does equal 20 squared. You can verify that. Um, as I mentioned, 
this could have factored. So the factored form here is 2 times x plus 16 times x minus 12. And if you could have factored that, we would have had a throwaway solution of negative 16 real quickly and a keeper of x equals 12. So comparing that to what's on the left, I think the advantage is with the factoring. But if you can't factor it, know that the quadratic formula is a good fallback. All right, I have one more Pythagorean theorem problem. Number 11, a guy wire 50 feet long runs from the top of a pole to a spot on the ground. If the height of the pole is eight feet more than the distance from the base of the pole to the spot where the guy wire is anchored, how tall is the pole? Round to the nearest tenth of a foot. Well, we'll see about that. Um, we've got a pole in the ground. We've got a wire coming off of it. The pole makes a 90 degree angle with the ground, so we have a right triangle here. Um, we're told the wire is 50 feet long. That's the hypotenuse of our triangle. It says the height is eight more than the distance from the pole out to where it's anchored. So if we let the base be x, the pole is going to be x plus eight. So in the Pythagorean theorem, we would have x squared plus x plus eight squared equals 50 squared. And so the form of this equation is pretty similar to the one that we just did. I'm going to start by multiplying x plus eight times itself. And 50 squared I can do, that's 2,500. Multiplying out on the left-hand side, distribute the x first. x times x is x squared. x times 8 is 8x. Distribute the 8. 8 times x is also plus 8x. And 8 times 8 is 64. So plus 64 equals 2,500. Combine like terms on the left. 2x squared plus 8x plus 8x is 16x plus 64 equals 2,500. Let's subtract that back over to the left-hand side. That gives us 2x squared plus 16x minus 2,436. You can do that on your calculator, 64 minus 2,500, and that is equal to zero. Notice again, this one has a common factor of two that I can take out, two times x squared plus 8x minus 1,218 equals zero. I don't know my factors of 1,218, so I would go to the quadratic formula anyway here. Um, if we do that, we need to round our solution to the nearest tenth of a foot when we get there. Okay. Let's try that. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. x equals the opposite of b, that's negative 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1,218, and that's all over 2 times 1. Continuing on, x equals negative 8, plus or minus the square root of 64, that's 8 squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1,218. That's going to be a positive number. And try this on your calculator. It's 4,872. All of that is over 2. Uh, adding inside the radical, we've got negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 4,936 over 2. And I'm going to ignore the subtraction option in the numerator because a negative number minus another number is going to be more negative. We can't have a negative distance here. So I only need to worry about the option with addition. So I'm going to go to the calculator and do negative 8 plus the square root of 4,936. I'm going to divide all of that by 2. And again, I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth of a foot. Let's go to the calculator. I need a fraction. So I press the fraction button. 
negative 8 plus square root 4,936. Did I get that number right? Yep, that was the right one. And that's all over 2. And I need to round to the nearest tenth, so that is 31.1 rounded to the nearest tenth. What did we need to figure out? It said, how tall is the pole? The pole is the x plus 8 side. So 31.1 plus 8 is 39.1 feet. All right, so those were four applications of the quadratic, I'm sorry, the Pythagorean theorem. I hope that was helpful to you. We have one more video to go through in this section and we'll pick it up next.